Hi, my name is Dylan, and uh, welcome to the Fraser's YouTube channel. My sweet wife, Lakin, is behind the camera today. Uh, today, we, uh, we flew to Snowdonia in uh, the UK. That's, that's where we're filming today. <laughs> Not really. We're, uh, we're still in Utah. This is one of the few non-sunny days that we have in the, uh, throughout the calendar in the state of Utah. But it gives us a, a pretty good opportunity to test out the weather ceiling on today's topic, which is the Sigma 100 to 400 f5 to 6.3 DGDN contemporary lens. This lens is available for both Panasonic L mount cameras and also Sony E mount cameras. Of course, Sigma also did have a 100 to 400 that was for Nikon and Canon DSLRs, but this is the, the new version that's optimized for mirrorless systems. And it's a big deal to us because we use L mount cameras and we don't have a ton of telephoto options and definitely very few uh, super telephoto options. This is pretty much the uh, the only 100 to 400, the only lens at all pretty much that goes beyond 300 millimeters for the L mount system. We got to test it out a little bit. We went out to a bird refuge out in uh, Utah close to the Great Salt Lake and we got some really really great photos here that you can see on screen. We found that the sharpness of the lens was really quite excellent and the autofocus performance although that is something that people like to critique very strongly when it comes to the Panasonic cameras. It actually, uh, this combination actually worked really, really well for capturing birds, both uh, static birds and also birds that were flying in the air. This combination seemed to do a really, really good job. But at least for today, we're just gonna be wandering around. Uh, there are mountain views to be had if the fog will clear. That's one thing that the 100 to 400 uh, doesn't get quite as much credit for. It's actually a really exceptionally good landscape lens for those tighter shots. So we might get a little bit of that, but at the same time, it also might just be a little bit of wandering around, enjoying ourselves on this uh, very moody and foggy day. Um, but I'm gonna hand the camera back to Lakin because uh, I think she's gonna be a lot more creative than I am in this sort of circumstance. But we'll also talk about some of the other features of the lens as we go. Tell us what you like about the 100 to 400. Um, I'm still getting used to it with landscape. I don't know how I feel about it there yet, but I've gotten some good shots with it. I do really love it for wildlife though. I can't wait to take it up to Yellowstone. It's gonna be so much fun. If you've ever seen one of my very few and far between lens reviews in the past, you'll know that I, I look for a few different things when I'm evaluating the quality of a lens. I'm looking at uh, lens clarity, sharpness, build quality, autofocus, and then all of that in the context of the price that you pay for the lens. So we'll go ahead and talk about, first of all, the body, the handling, and the overall build quality of this lens. It's excellent on this lens. There's quite a few things to talk about in terms of the um, all of the features that this lens has. It has an AF, MF, focusing switch, it has a focus limiting switch, it has an autofocus lock button, which is pretty handy, and then it also has 
an IS switch that controls whether or not the IS is on and then also the two different modes of IS it has. So it's pretty, most of this is all pretty standard fare for long telephoto lenses like this. The lens overall feels really, really well built. It does have a little lock switch if you want to lock it at 100 millimeters. 67 millimeter filter thread and it does have a place where you can add the optional collar to it uh, but if you don't have the optional collar on it it has like a kind of an interesting rubber band thing that goes around it uh, kind of an interesting thing to add to it it has a, a nice weight to it right now we've got it on a Panasonic S5 uh, that's actually the only L mount camera that we own anymore we own two S5s we don't own an S1 anymore uh, which is a little bit unfortunate because I think the S1 is probably a slightly better camera to pair this lens with just because of the size and weight. Uh, it would balance a little bit better if you were putting it on something like the S1. Also, the S1 is probably just a better camera for like wildlife purposes too because it shoots at a, a higher uh, frame per second and it has an XQD card slot for writing files a little bit faster. But it still works great on the S5, and the S5 also uh, has all of the latest autofocusing improvements from Panasonic. And I must say, the one of the, the last lens reviews I did was for a Sigma lens on a Panasonic S-series body, and I was really, really disappointed with the autofocusing performance of that lens, given the fact that it was designed for DSLRs originally and then had basically a permanent adapter added onto it whereas this lens is different this one has been designed from the ground up for mirrorless systems both E mount and L mount and all of that really shows Sigma has done a great job with the autofocusing performance of this lens it's not quite as snappy as like my 24 to 105 from Panasonic uh, but it's very very close to a Panasonic lens when it comes to the autofocusing performance. So that's that's really, really good. And that's really important for a lens like this because you wanna be able to uh, track and focus correctly on things such as flying birds. Now the overall clarity and the sharpness of the lens, hopefully we've shown you a lot of results in this video from this lens, both of the birds that we got of the, of the bird refuge earlier and then also some stuff that we've gotten out here and it's not the fastest lens in the world you know it's a 5 to 6.3 but don't let that deter you when it comes to the sharpness of this lens it's really really excellent it's uh, one of the better long telephoto lenses that i've ever tested to be fair i haven't tested a ton of them in my entire lifetime but i must say it's it's a really really good performer and i think it'll serve both uh, medium resolution cameras like the S5 and it also will pair really well with the S1R or if you've got like an A7R uh, series camera from the Sony lineup it would be just fine on those cameras too I think it would resolve a lot of detail let's talk about the overall uh, value of this lens this, this lens uh, retails brand new at 950 ish or so but I think if you look around on the used market you might be able to find one for closer to 800 which is excellent excellent value for money uh within the l mount there's nothing really to compare it to at all so from that standpoint excellent value for money but then when you compare it to the sony g master 100 to 400 if you're looking at this for sony cameras it's really really excellent value for money there too because uh the 100 to 400 from sony specifically is like i think almost a $2,500 lens, somewhere in that ballpark. So uh, 950 bucks for really, really top-notch quality in a lens that does just about the same thing as that Sony. Really, really excellent value for money. So with all that, I'm gonna say the Sigma 100 to 400 uh, contemporary lens is a winner. We love it. And like Lakin said, we're really excited to take it out to Yellowstone in uh, the next month. And we can't wait to bring you along for that trip as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.